Well, the weather is seasonable. The fragments of silicon are coming up. Welcome to Season 18 of Fragments of Silicon. I'm your host, Adam. Joining me as usual are Gallix and Petty Fan. Um, the usual crew is here. No additions or subtractions needed. Yet. Or want. Just. Like, I don't know. We, we still... I know. I don't think we ever bothered really looking uh, for a replacement for Twilight. I mean, we don't know anyone else. That's I not mean, necessarily true, but it's more we just really didn't try. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we didn't send out any feelers or notifications or anything that you know we needed a fourth person because, quite frankly, we don't. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I think that's one of the reasons why Twilight um, left in the first place. He was the most superfluous. Anyway, um, putting that aside, uh, we unfortunately do not have a guest this uh, day. Not this week. We do have a guest on Friday, but we'll get to that on that day. Um, but it is as custom to roll on with the news. And, Petty, why don't you start us off this week? Oh, God, where to begin? What's a good sign? Um, I actually finally got my new CPAP machine after all of the bullshit. <laughs> I was lied to by somebody. I don't know if it was the... Pers the um, office manager, the equipment provider, or my doctor's office. But I finally got it all sorted out. So, yay. That is the important thing, I think. Um, I also... Um, on Tuesday, I get to see another doctor about moving forward with getting the baclofen pump. Mm. So, hopefully that goes well. And let's see. Uh, this Sunday is mine and my sister's birthday, so, woo! We're getting old. Very, very old. You're the You're young younger than us. So. I... <laughs> You're the youngest cast member here, or on the other show. I feel actually, the oldest. Actually, Kevin might be the youngest. I, uh, or you could be the same age. I don't think we've ever determined that. We can find that out in, what, an hour? Two hours? So, something like that. Um... And yeah, I guess over the break, I've been playing Destiny 2 because they had the DLC on sale, so I figured, why not? Mm. Um, it's been alright, but god damn it, Bungie. I, for some reason, they thought it fit to lock um, like half the content like, the story content, so it's not playable anymore. So if I want to know the story of Destiny 2, I need to go look up a YouTube video mm -hmm. of, of some guy trying to explain the lore. Because I guess, it's... screw me for trying to, you know, want to play it myself? I mean, that's been a problem with Destiny since the beginning. 
I mean, in fairness, Destiny 1 didn't really have any lore until the, like, last raid. But, yeah. Yes. Um, and then... Uh, other than that, not a whole lot else has been going on. So I guess next victim. Oh, Galax, that's a year ago. Uh, last week has been relatively eventful. Uh, I forget if I mentioned that I've been doing a... I think I mentioned that we did a, a Cyberpunk Red Online one-shot with uh, some of my online friends. I mean, not like game online, but uh, it's a tabletop thing, so just on Discord. But we had the second session of that, and uh, we basically had a heist that unbelievably went off without a hitch, so that was strange. Usually heists have hitches. Uh, admittedly, our plane was pretty wacky to start with, so... Um, so that happened, uh, this past weekend, instead of playing Pathfinder, my Pathfinder group went out and watched the, uh, Dungeons and Dragons movie together. Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, nothing groundbreaking story-wise, but it certainly was a better capture of D&D than most other things that have tried to do the franchise in media have been, I think, aside from live play stuff. Um, which is usually not official. Uh, let's see. <coughs> um, I've picked up a few new games lately, but haven't had a ton of time for playing them. Um, I got the Bayonetta Origins game and Battle Network Legacy Collection. Um probably going to get Advance Wars Reboot Camp when I can get out somewhere to get it. Or maybe I'll order it. I don't know. I'll think about it. Um, but mostly uh, still uh, looking forward to um, the Tears of the Kingdom, which is still like uh, three weeks or so from coming out, but it's getting close, so And they've uh, started having some preview things up, which I have been... I haven't had time to watch them yet, but... Um, have uh, heard people talking about them that have. And uh, also have been... Uh, since I've been watching some people playing Breath of the Wild in the lead-up to it, I went back to Breath of the Wild for a bit uh, to finish up the Hyrule Compendium and... I think next I'm probably going to try and make sure I get all of the uh, overworld bosses to get the get medals the for those. Yet? Huh? Did you get all the poops yet? I'm not crazy. D-Pad sure Rick is that? crazy. He's actually trying that. <laughs> uh, but, no, I have enough Koroks to have gotten all the inventory things, and I don't feel the need to super stretch myself for that. I'm only trying to do the things that are relatively fun. But who knows, maybe I'll get bored. Honestly, I need to get back to playing Splatoon 3 because I haven't played that in a few days. But I think that's about what I got. Okay. I guess it's my go. Uh, let's see. Um, well, as mentioned before the break started, the, you know, the break here was longer than usual, mainly due to the fact that my uncle and his wife came into town. And yeah, that went about as I expected. Not the best of times. I... Um... I suppose the first thing is um, his health isn't what it used to be, uh, especially since um, 
he was up here right before he had to prep for surgery. Um, oh, fun. Yeah, because his heart was um, out of sync. Um, as I understood it, um, the left and right ventricle were beating at different intervals. And that was causing his blood pressure to uh, massively rise. Um, like, uh, on the final day he was here, it was like 200 something. Like, it, it was really high. So, rip. <sighs> So repairs at my mother's place had to be limited there. You know, I, I still had to go because in case I needed to help out with something, I didn't really need to, but it was a just in case sort of thing. Like that being said, I am not missing the rants and epitaphs of racial varieties. You know, like, I will spare you the details. You know, just imagine, well, a stereotypical Fox News viewer. And you'll be right on the money. So. <laughs> mm, let me see here. And so, next week... Um, is my long-awaited dentist appointment next Friday. We'll finally have the, um, what do they call it, the parodontal? Like, how do you pronounce it? It's the deep, it's the teeth, uh, deep clean. Mm -hmm. It's the full one, too, so that's going to be two hours. Fun. Uh, yeah, I do not look forward to it. Does anyone? Mm. No, I imagine not. But the teeth do need it. I'm just... And let's see, in terms of gaming, um, the off-season has been dominated by uh, my playing of the original Grandia, the HD remaster, uh, the original one. Like, it's a lot longer than I was expecting. Like, a Sausage Classic JRPG. Hmm. PlayStation. Or whatever we're calling those now. I think we're still calling them JRPGs. There's been a little bit of chatter about some people not liking that, but yeah. I haven't heard a good alternative yet. I mean, that is not the, the thing. Like, it's not just enough to disagree with a term, like, say, Metroidvania. It's like, oh, sure, Matt McMuscles can invent his own term, search action, but, you know, if other people don't fucking use it, then it's fairly pointless. Like, yeah, okay, you call it a search action game, that doesn't make it a search action game. It's like... Language isn't um, really determined by one person. It's almost like words have meaning. Wait, what? <laughs> it's not just that words have meaning. It's that repeated widespread use dictates these things. It's like, yeah, Metroidvania is a clunky title, but... Nobody came up with a better descriptor. Like, at least one that stuck. Yeah. So, like, um, you know, the Metroidvania term, the JRPG, and yeah, it's a term that I don't really agree with. Um, if only because people have been in the West have been making games in the style of JRPGs for 
quite a while now. Probably, I mean, that's a whole history that we don't have time for. But, you know, it's like, in fact, JRPGs is, is uh, actually a newer term. Um, back in the day, we just called these things RPGs. And we called the other kind of RPGs CRPGs mm-hmm. for computer role-playing games because you found them on the computer and, you know, you found the RPGs on the console. But, you know, anyway, it's all a thing. Um, it's like, if you want people to stop calling them JRPGs, you, you need a better term. They, they got called JR. Japanese role-playing games because they're role-playing games from Japan. Like, it's, ironically enough, the West that uh, complicated the term originally. And yeah, I I think there have been some Japanese developers that have uh, blanched at the title. Um, But minor Twitter chatter does not a paradigm shift, unfortunately. Um, anyway, uh, I'm close to the end of Grandia, um, got caught up in some of the bonus quests, although I had to abandon one due to the fact that it was tedious as fuck, and I was just done with it. (laughs) I mean, uh, part of the problem is, like, when you, they didn't space out the saves properly and when you quit the game and come back the monsters respawn oh fun yeah i imagine it's great for grinding not great for you know actually trying to play uh it's fine for normal spaces like um your normal dungeons like uh, uh not that big uh or I suppose reasonably spaced for a JRPG, like, uh, you know, a dungeon wouldn't take me more than an uh, an hour. Look, these are JRPG term times, but like the um, Tower of Temptations, a goddamn like 20 floor arena, something like that. And they didn't put a safe space in the second area. It, it, it's, it's, kind of badly designed so i said fuck it because th- there are other games to play um and let me see um yeah that's about it for my news for the week I so merrily we shall roll along to something different this week um or rather, this is plan D? Something like that. Yeah. Um, because, like, th- this is like, no, no, this is like the backup to the backup to the backup. Um, and it's also not our usual game for um, when we don't have a guest, um, because I'm trying to make sure we don't get burnt out on Heaven's Arena again. Heaven's Vault, but yeah. Yeah, sorry, Heaven's Fault. I didn't feel like being burned out was the threat there, for me at least. I think the bigger threat was forgetting what the fuck we were doing. That's Go ahead. I mean, that's usually not the problem. And remember, um, you're not the one who's actually playing the game. That's true. Petty Fan was getting a little bit burnt out on navigation. Yes. Um, Anyway, so what we got here, uh, fresh from the inbox is the demo for the Kickstarter of Autumn with the Shiba Inu. Now, if you're a long-time watcher of the program, you might recognize this. Because um, I'm not sure exactly how long ago it was, uh, but uh, we did a review some time ago of the original game, Suburb. Uh, summer with the Shiba Inu. Uh, and this is not the sequel. No, this is a 
standalone uh, universe installment, whatever you call those, like, you know, this takes place in the same uh, universe as the first game, but it has nothing to do with the other games. So if you are unfamiliar with the summer, with the Shiba Inu game, you don't need to play that in order to be familiar with this one. Um, so, uh, let me see here. I suppose I, uh, no, that's not the right page. I hate that. Uh, uh, no. No. Sorry. Um, you have too many. Anyway, um, so Autumn with the Shiba Inu. Play is uh, yeah, I remember this. The, 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 the weird infusion of things. Um, play is Okay, Alex, how do you pronounce this? Which? Hang on, hang on. I would probably just say Quel Quay Li. Oh, is it's Ch it's Chinese? Yeah, it's Chinese. Probably Chui Li then, but I'm not sure. Um. Yeah. So we'll go with Chui Li for the moment. Um, anyway, uh, the story. Freelance hacker Chui Li is given a new job. Uncover information from a secret government network about a high-profile corruption case. While she typically avoids jobs as risky as this, her belief that the result can bring on positive change to Shiba Island convinced her to accept. Uh, the job leads to Chui Li bluffing her way into the Ari government undercover. The more she digs around, the more secrets Kui Ling dis uh, discovers, leading to question her own existence. Huh. The fuck? <laughs> Look. The, the See, fact now I'm just b b wondering if how, how essential it is for the characters to be uh, dogs. I, I, I'm like... I, I think we had this conundrum the first time round. <laughs> like, like I remember the first game being this fucking spacey. Um, like virtual reality was involved. You must be at least this blitz to enjoy this game. <laughs> yeah. Like, and. I remember we remarked at some of the cracks that this world displayed because it's like it's a world that's populated with non anthropomorphic animals, yet it has some things that are very clearly meant for anthropomorphic animals or, you know, humans. Like, we. we we did not. We did not exactly have an equating disparity between the fact that we're dealing with real ass dogs that can, you know, apparently talk and hack computers. Yeah. And like it, the things don't need a reason to have anthropomorphic characters, uh, but to have characters that are literally just animals, you'd think that would at least be somewhat remarked upon. You'd think, but I don't remember it being addressed. And, you know, once again, like, you know, we look at the demo here. Um, you, we, we've got a, we've got a regular ass Labrador retriever, um, except in an IT polo. And we've got a regular workstation here. You know, we have nothing, at least from the eyeballs. You know, for the dog to type on the keyboard with its paws. 
and use yes. the cans of various sodas and water bottles, you know, with his paws. And, and whatever he would use for the mouse. You know, I'm just thinking of that gif with the dog typing on the keyboard now. Like, like you know, the meme one. Mm. You know, like I said, we, we, we had this problem the first time around, and it hasn't gotten better. And I don't think this will ever get better from this universe. Because they're kind of locked into this particular aesthetic you know even though I remember like one of the quirks of you know Labradors being on Sheba Island was the fact that Labradors are like twice the size or it was the reverse it was one of the things like, there was a size disparity there yeah I think yeah I think it was like uh, there was a Sheba Inu working in Labrador land i.e. Um, Canada. Why is that dog wearing glasses? Because it has because it has an optical condition that keeps it from seeing well. Um, you know exactly my problem with that, Galax. No, your question is where did the dog get the glasses? <laughs> or how did they put the glasses on, but yes. How are the glasses staying on? Since, you know... Glasses are fitted for human noses and ears. That, do, that, that does not look like, you know, once again, they look like regular glasses, maybe except for a larger um, ridge part to accommodate the, the dog nose. But look at the glasses. They're not on the ears. Mm -hmm. They're under the ears. What's holding that? They're on top of the ears from the front view. But we're in the side view. Right. It's incorrect from the side view. Like, so, what is it? What are the glasses on? Magic. Maybe I've they're, heard. like, tucked into the ear canal, but that's, you know, not ideal. <laughs> We'd have bigger problems at that point. Yeah. Like, these are the questions that will come continually come up. Like I said, we had this problem with the first game. And we are already having the problem with the demo for the proposed game. Because, uh, let me be clear, th this is a demo um, for a game that is um, apparently theoretical. Because th this is a Kickstarter demo. Um and the campaign is running right now at time of recording or at time of broadcast. Depend, you know. um, and it's got 23 days to go, um, but it's not promising. In fact, I'm going to make the bold prediction that this is going to be a failed Kickstarter. And I don't even need to look up uh, like kick track or whatever. Um, because out of a proposed budget or goal of $11,730 Canadian, um, and yes, the, the developer is located in Canada, um, that is why there's so much uh, Canada in this game. <laughs> why? Uh, what other reason would there be? I'm pretty sure they'd try and sneak Tim Hortons in if they could. Mm. Like... Uh, anyway, and it has so far raised $1,193. So, you know, about 10% of its goal, thereabouts. Okay, apparently the dog is a burner phone. What the fuck? <laughs> Look, it's important to have a burner phone if you're dealing with, like, communications that you want to make sure aren't tracked. Yeah. <laughs> Again, your question is, how is the dog using a burner phone? <laughs> well, no, I mean, the the how it get one is also probably, you know, valid with this one. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, um, going through the character uh, bio of uh, Kui Li here, um, working in freelance hacking, she typically takes small and low-profile jobs to keep herself afloat. Kui Li doesn't remember much of her childhood or time in... <sighs> <laughs> This is going to hurt. In the arena, like arenas, it, it, it's some pun on the Bahamas. Um, and generally distrust the ARI, the ARI. I'm not sure if this is an acronym or an, an initialism. Also, dogs don't <laughs> smile like that. <laughs> no. Yeah, God, no. And those in power. Uh, she has a high rank, but ra- rarely uses her privilege out of sympathy for those lower than her. She's a few steps away from yelling, hack the planet. <laughs> Look, it, w- it would not be the dumbest thing here. Probably not, no. I... Like I said, this is opening up all sorts of questions um, that I don't think this game series is prepared to answer. I mean, I know to some extent MST3K Mantra. But when you're doing this kind of thing, when you're doing this kind of evidently mature storytelling with so, this evidently relatively childish character designs featuring non-anthropomorphic animals doing human things you're kind of going out of your way to raise some of those questions you don't want people to be wasting too much effort on thinking about so it's time to learn vocabulary with fragments of silicon the word to be used here is versimilitude Make sure to note that down, children. Yes. You will be tested later. Yes. What uh, what Galax is describing here is a dissonance in the verisimilitude of the game. And something that has not been reconciled. You know. Um, because, yeah. That is the inherent paradox of the Shiba Inu series. That is a weird sentence to say, but you know, what's one more on the pile at this point? Yeah. Because, yeah, this is, you know, you would think that, you know, look at the cute doggies doing human things and wearing human clothes. But on the other hand, these games tell serious stories that we are meant to take it seriously. You know, but you've combined that with an episode of Dave Letterman's Stupid Pet Tricks. Or oh, maybe some pro- thing. or maybe some program on Animal Planet. You know, pick your poison. You know, So, we could belabor the, the point here, but there are other facets of this game, uh, and that is the Shiba Inus, as there are, uh, pl- uh, there are plenty of them in the supporting cast. Strangely enough, they also have Chinese names. Like Bi Shu. Is this a for Chinese studio or Um See, I don't know how to answer that. I, I like as in I know that uh the developer is located in Canada, but it's like I don't know either the racial makeup 
or the actual dogs that they own. But it's like, if I had to fathom a guess, you know, it would be, you know, people of Chinese descent that own both a at least one Labrador and one Shiba Inu, possibly multiples. I mean, there could be like cultural reasons why they have Chinese names. I don't know, but I was I was like in universe as well. But my first guess would be that there's an out of universe reason too. Fair enough. Fair like that would be my guess as well because, yeah. In case you don't know, uh, Shiba Inu is a breed indigenous to Japan. Yeah. So having a Shiba Inu named Bishu or Shula or Yun Ba is a bit odd. Because um, Chinese is not Japanese. In I fact, they often don't get along very well. Who would have like, thought? Well, it's like, uh, yes, the Japanese alphabet was descended from China, uh, from Chinese like some a thousand years ago or so. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, but borrowing but borrowing and altering a writing system isn't the same as using the same language. Yeah, it, it, it's like linguistically, phonetically, they are very different. Like, like just to the ear, both languages sound very different. Um, anyway, uh. Features. So you must choose wisely. Help uh, Chule <clears throat> navigate her undercover job. Will she succeed in retrieving the classified data? Um, ending trade offs. What seems like a good outcome might end up hurting someone else. Your choices impact the endings and the world. That's a lot of pressure to, uh, to put on a doggo. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Original character artwork, uh, Alicia's dog illustration makes the inhabitants of Shiba Inu Island come to life. Like, I guess we'll have to take the the, the word of the, the blurb here because um, I'm not sure who Alicia is. Like, clearly the writer of this text knows her, but, you know... <sighs> How do I put this? Is Alicia a person that is known in like Twitter circles or somewhere online for her dog artwork? Like the world may never know. Like I'm guessing more that um, this is the author's friend or um, life partner or something like that. It's helping on the project. Um, more than anything else, like, and we are still on this screen. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's on a auto. Yeah, it's a, it's a visual novel. Did you accidentally unclick the auto thing? Nope. Like, also that. Also, the blinking of that dog is unsettling me. It's not just the blinking; the whole, all of the facial animations are wrong. Yeah, like they're making, they're trying to make its mouth do human things, and it's not working. Well, yeah, it's like I didn't know a dog could hit the uncanny valley, but here we are. <laughs> they hit it with a baseball bat. Yes. Anyway, I suppose I should get to the rewards tiers. Um, the, the backer tiers. Anyway, um, for $4 Canadian, the supporter tier, um, you will get, you can support the game. And you will get a digital wallpaper pack. Um, for $14 Canadian, you will get the game. Get the game when it launches on Steam. For $27 Canadian, these are some exact prices. Um, the full package. Get the full package. Includes the digital OST, stickers, and your name in the credits. Um, $37 Canadian, the collector's edition. 
includes everything previously and a copy of Summer with the Shiba Inu and an emote pack. And looking at the uh, the uh, the Shiba Inu emotes, they probably should have gone with this art style. <laughs> it's a lot more cartoony and um, appealing. For three hundred and fifty dollars Canadian, um, you can add your dog to the game. Includes everything previously and adding your dog to the game. Presumably, you know a, a, the artist rendition of the dog mm -hmm. like um though i'm gonna wonder how that's like i'm just thinking of the cat monster from bloodstained the three cat monsters you mean yeah and yeah. two dogs yeah like that kind of that kind of oh this is an uh, this is a thing that clearly stands out from the rest of the game. I don't know. I thought it was okay. It did stand out. That that's kind of that's kind of my worry with this. Like, you know, somebody's Chihuahua or Poodle well, ends up in this game. You know, Blue Healer. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have some sort of dog breed that's. Not really represented thus far. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, you could probably get away with like that by saying, you know, Shiba Inu Island has this um, poodle quarter or something like that. Or it just kind of shows up on a TV screen somewhere and don't ask questions. Yeah. Like, th th there are definitely ways around it, but it's also the kind of thing, um, like, if you have a fucking Great Dane showing up, he's going to raise even more questions. Because, you know, you thought the disparity between a Labrador and a Shiba Inu was big. Oh, boy. Now we get, you know, we get Scooby-Doo into this mix. Yeah. You know, it's like getting a fucking a literal giant into the mix. Anyway, um, you'll be ple also be pleased to know that the uh, developers have included a pie chart for the budget. Oh so, man, pie! I think that's pretty common nowadays. I do miss eating pie. I like. Get 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 a friend who's good at making pie. I have what? a mom who's good at making pie, which is nice. It's not so much good at making pie; it's making a um, diabetic-friendly pie. Oh yeah, that's fine. Well, I don't know. Can you eat fruit still? Yes, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. I. It depends on the fruit, the ripeness. I don't want to get into it. Okay. You know. I was just going to say, my mom makes apple pie with no added sugar, and it's still pretty good. Like I said, it, it's a whole thing. Uh -huh. and I'm like, and it, like, and yes, it, it, it's also, it also depends on how you ingest the, the product. Mm -hmm. Like, um, eating fruit and eating fruit pie are two different things because you don't have the fiber. That's true. That's that's the stuff that mitigates um, carbs and sugars. I'm like, anyway, I'm getting off track here. Um, anyway, in terms of where your money will go. Um, 32% will go towards the art, 20% for music and programming, 20% for writing, 15% uh, for fees and taxes, and 13% for miscellaneous. Like, I have no further comments here. Mm. Like, I honestly don't know if that... Uh, how that balances out. No. All right.
And apparently um, the first game, A Summer with the Shiba Inu, has sold in excess of over 12,000 copies. Which I suppose is really good for a visual novel. Mm -hmm. Like... And also worth noting, they are the creators of a completely unrelated vis uh, visual novel called Death Becomes You. Um, so that one doesn't star oddly photorealistic dogs. Uh, no, it looks like it's a Yuri visual novel. Um. At least just from the image I see here. I, um, our experienced team is led by Quilly, who has directed and programmed successful visual novels, including two commercial games on Steam and consoles. I'm not sure about consoles, because I know that um, the edition of Summer with the Shiba Inu that we reviewed was the console version. And that was um, ported by our old foe, Who's at Radalakia Games? Uh, they don't provide games to us anymore, so I don't feel bad about disparaging them a bit. Mm -hmm. Like, anyway, uh, the story script is written by Jennifer uh, Sinestra, a repeating collaborator, and Alicia Garcia Ocha. A professional animal illustrator. So there we go. That that answers my question. Um, that is who Alicia is. A professional animal illustrator. Who once again I suspect is a friend of the developer or uh, the writer of this text. Um, joins us to uh, bring the world of Shiba Inu Island to life once again. Um, okay, we have Kohai designing the game UI. Like, that's a odd term to say the, the unpaid interns. And longtime collaborator Jeff Clements creating the original soundtrack. Let's see. Risks and challenges. To make this project possible, we rely on the incredible support of our Kickstarter backers, um, especially in the finance and the cost. Um, yeah, this looks all, this is boilerplate. I'm not going to read all this out. And yeah, that, um, completes the bio on Autumn with the Shiba Inu. Oh, man. I, as far as anything further to say about the demo itself, um, I don't think we have anything further to add yet. But, you know, we've been stuck in this office. Oh, wow, we actually moved scenes. I'm scared. I mean, it's not super unusual in a visual novel to have yeah. massive rapid transit. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could set the text to go faster. Oh, yeah. I'm like, once again, so, uh, and I was just talking about this. You're bringing the huge dogs into the equation. Well, clearly the the mastiffs are what they use as transit. That may actually be... Most, most of the equivalents of that, that would be the place. So it would be like for, for friggin' mastiffs, like the Bay Area rapid transit and shit. Yeah. I mean, granted, if it's a transit system for mass diffs, it's going to fit other dogs pretty easily. Because once again, massive mass diffs are massive for dogs. Varying somewhat, but yes, they're all on the large side. Yeah. You know, they are significantly larger than uh, Labradors, to say nothing of Shiba Inus. Also, yeah, Shibas are pretty small. The ones that are closer to lab size, I think, are usually Akitas. 
you're probably right there. Like I know that I know I know that an Akita is a bigger version of a Shiba Inu, or they're similar, or at least they look similar. Whatever. Yes, I uh, suppose that is the case. So apparently Dog is going to get sushi. Hmm. Well, it's almost 20 after, so we should probably move to the next segment here. Yep. Yeah, Ashiba's is generally going to be less than two feet tall. Anyway, and, so... And Akita are a bit over two feet. Yeah, so this is Autumn with the Shiba Inu, the demo. Um, if you feel like backing it on Kickstarter, um, hang on. Let me pass on the link to the cohorts so they can post it in the um, Twitch page. So, you know, someone post that in the chat. And... Uh, uh, Gallic, yeah, sorry, Petty. Whenever you're ready, um, play us to the next segment. All right, so welcome to the topic of discussion. Uh, so this week we are talking about the acquisition of Rovio by Sega. Like, so where to start here? In the beginning, wait a minute, hold on. Like, <laughs> uh, like, I suppose we should talk a bit about Rovio because, oddly enough, I don't think we've actually talked about Rovio or indeed Angry Birds. On the program, like if we, if we have, did, it's it was, been in passing. You know, a long, long uh, time ago. Um, but yeah, so Rovio, if you don't know the name, you know their signature franchise. That is Angry Birds. Um, and. Angry Birds is about all they're known for. Um, but they have, you know, they have made other games. Um, being, a, uh, being a mobile developer, and they've been a mobile developer since the early 2000s. Um, Pre-iPhone. Which means, you know, they cut their teeth on early to mid-2000s phones. What we yeah. would call feature phones. Right. Or what we call now flip phones. You know, um, like, I couldn't tell you exactly, like, I assume they, like, they cut their, uh, their teeth on, like, Java or Brew or maybe Symbian. Probably um, Java. You know, um, my, po um, and before um, Angry Birds, like uh, one of their biggest claims to fame is a game that was known as Mole. Or um, or King of the Cabbage World. Um, why is this notable? Because this is one of the first commercial real-time multiplayer games on mobile. Uh, we're talking about a product that was released in January of 2005. Like the the uh, this was the Wild West days of mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and. 
in terms of release, Angry Birds was their 52nd game. Um, coming out in December of 2009. Um, which puts it in, you know, in the prime early days of the App Store. And once again, like, Rovio here has released a lot of games. But Angry Birds is the series that you know them for. Like, may not love, but well, that might bring up the question: Why did Angry Birds become the cultural phenomenon that it did? And because it's, yeah. it's really friggin' easy to work with visually. I think that's part of it. Like it has very merchandisable characters. And, you know, we've seen that work in the video game space and beyond. I mean... Not, e- not even merchandisable, although it is part of it. They're easily identifiable and distinct. Right. And to parallel with Sega, um, Sonic. Like, you know, maybe not, maybe not having as much edge as Sonic uh, had or has, I, like, but... You know, it it's an easily merchandisable and recognizable um, an, animal thing. Um, not anthropomorphic, um, kind of the opposite. You know, what if you t- what if you uh, turned a bird into a ball or a sphere? But I think I know why. This well, even ha- they even have similar sim- they don't all have exactly the same shape but it's similar enough you know geometric shapes if you want to get technical with the terminology here like um but my point is that angry birds became The face of mobile gaming, because it's really um, the perfect mobile game, or one of them. Like, it's a game that works supremely well with a touchscreen. But also has enough depth to last more than, I'd say, ten minutes. You know, especially uh, when you consider the time of release. Um, And it's also like, even in 2009, a lot of people had a smartphone, had had an iPhone. And clearly not as many as people even like a few years later would have. But, you know, the accessibility of Angry Birds is off the charts. Like, and we saw this in other early success stories. Um, Think Cut the Rope. Temple Run, uh, where, um, what is it? Oh, where's my water? What's water? It's like, where's my water or something like that. Yeah, y- you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, homegrown mobile games that were easy to play and translated well to a touchscreen the type of mobile games that people bizarrely led people to claim that, you know, mobile games are going to kill the everything. Fuck's sakes, I talked to developers who thought this way, who thought the iPad 
was going to replace goddamn consoles. Like, I had to fucking tell him, no. And I'm not a fucking... It serves different purposes. Yeah, it's like, it's also, the touch screen is, you know, is attractive because it's simple. Games that require complex controls do not work well on touchscreens. Complex what? controls here meaning such things as running to the left and jumping. Yeah, especially back in those days. You know, um, 2009, 2010, we're talking pre-Bluetooth controllers. I mean, if you wanted to play, like, say, Mega Man 2 on mobile... You had to do it with the goddamn buttons on the, vir you know, the virtual touchscreen thing. Not ideal. As in, it was garbage. To put it lightly. But it wasn't just Angry Birds that was a hit. Um, because in about a yearly succession, we had Angry Birds Seasons and Angry Birds Rio. One of those you can still play today. Actually, you can play all of these today. Not on mobile. Um, because uh, Rovio pulled... Uh, all like all of the early Angry Birds games off of the market. Um, some of it due to licensing, mm -hmm. like um, Rio. Rio Space, oddly enough, is a licensed game. Like you might be wondering how, and the answer is NASA. Mm, that would explain that. You know th that's why this game got delisted from say Steam. You know, like, 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 I don't think there's a way, an easy way to play Angry Birds Space. But the thing about like Angry Birds, uh, you know, the what we call the Angry Birds trilogy is these were ported to every like console at the time. You know, I like, think I like, just saw like Wii ports a few days ago at my local game shop. Wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, like the the Wii, the Wii U, the PlayStation Three, the PSP, um, DS had a lot of them. 3DS. I'm like, uh, and I believe Angry Birds Star Wars uh, was also preserved. Maybe Angry Birds Transformers as well. Um, not all of them. Yeah. But. Yeah, you know, the problem with Angry Birds on console was the t the tax. Yeah, they weren't free to play like they were on mobile. You act they were actually paid products. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. They, they were paid products on mobile. See, you got to remember uh, the early Angry Birds games were from oh. the race were from the race to the bottom era. The premium um, app era. No, the race of the bottom era, where, you know, uh, they were priced at 99 cents. Like, each. And I'm trying to remember if, like, the, I, and I believe, like, because, um, especially, like, Angry Birds Seasons had additional content packs, but they didn't charge for those. Like I said, it was a different time. I think Mario Run technically is still trying to use this model. Uh, no, no, it uses the free-to-start model. Oh, right, yeah. No, I mean, um, this is back in the day when, you know, uh, they would update the games for free instead of being where um, the real money was made. Or at least... Um, like I said, it was a different age. 
full of astonishment and wonder. Yeah. Um, and that was further bu- buoyed by the um, forays into branded, like, uh, you know, the, the Star Wars and the Transformers. Uh, I'm trying to think when Angry Birds um, went free to play. I want to say, like, either Angry Birds 2 or Angry Birds Pop, something like that. Something but like that, that was like, yeah. What is the monetization in those? Is um, it like you pl- pay for stamina to play more? Uh, typical free to play stuff, or yeah. Pay, pay for better birds to throw? <coughs> Probably pay for more yeah. birds. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's your typical microtransaction uh, scam. But also, not, not necessarily um, where their money was being made, at least, like, um, say, in the middle of the, uh, the last decade, you know, 2014, 2015. Because, um, once again, Angry Birds did manage to become a successful transmedia property. Um, with Somehow. A- I wouldn't say somehow. Well, the, like, the movie the movie got away with giving them arms and legs. Right. But you know, the the movie wa- uh, the first movie was a financial success. Um and that led into a television series and a second movie and a, a shitload of uh merchandise, you know, plushies and what have you. But that does bring us to today. I mean, I am skipping over uh, quite a bit in terms of like game releases, but I don't feel like talking about the, the goddamn cart racer or mm-hmm. the RPG. You know, you know, w- when Angry Birds wasn't engaged in different permutations of licensed material it was um trying different genres you know it is a very versatile franchise that way Mm -hmm. um and well the thing that's really hit uh rovio and angry birds is stagnation. Not total stagnation. Um, Angry Birds, you know, still brings in a good chunk of change. Uh, Rovio's financials for the last year was like $344 million, I believe. Um, USD. Which is solid, but it's also speaking to their problems. Um, because when you get down to it, uh, Rovio is a one hit wonder. I mean, they Again, certainly you said this was their how many game? Yeah, like 50, 50 something. Second. And how many yeah, of the 50. other ones have you heard of? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, or. I can go through the the list of games they released after, and I'm going to spare you. Like it's going to be much quicker to go through the games that aren't Angry Birds related, and I'm including things like Bad Piggies, you know, the the pig spinoffs, um, Amazing Alex, The Crudes, Selfie Slam, Retry. Um, Love Rock starring Shakira, Battle Bay, Sugar Blast, and Small Town Murders. That's, I think, what, eight? Something like that. It's not a big number. No. Um, versus, like I said. A big number that are Angry Birds related, yes. Yeah. However number, I, I, I'm not counting. 
And, and once again, that's just the Angry Birds um, games. There are two Angry Birds movies, and there are there are a shitload of television series. Well, Rovio did not Ang- make the movies. They just... Uh... Actually, they sort of did, and they sort of didn't. Like... Really? So... Rovio Animation. Oh, they actually have an animation? No. Rovio Animation was spun off. Ah. As you do. So that's why it's a yes and no sort of situation. You know. Anyway. But yeah, um, we've got Angry Birds Tunes, Piggy Tales, Angry Birds Stella, Angry Birds Blues, Angry Birds Bird Love Cup. Bless you. <laughs> it's B R. It's B A. It's B I R L D. Bird. If they. Oh, burled like like world, but with yeah. birds. Yeah, burled. It, it's just really awkward to say. Uh, Angry Birds Zero Gravity, Angry Birds On the Run, Angry Birds Makerspace, Angry Birds Slingshot Stories, Angry Birds Bubble Trouble, Angry Birds Summer Madness, Angry Birds Iron-Blooded Orphans. I'm sorry, what? (laughs) I made one of those up. I was about to say... Look, they could do a Gundam crossover, but if they did, it would probably just be Iron Angry Birds Gundam. <laughs> it's also to make sure you two are paying attention. <laughs> You're an asshole. It's good to be in charge. Anyway. Why? Because we can't fire you? <laughs> you also can't rebel. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, you mean not successfully. Indeed. Like, anyway, I mean, look, we're not getting anything stupider than Burled Cup here. At least hopefully. Anyway, so, yeah, Angry Birds, um, still a profitable franchise, but we're well far and away from it being on the any sort of actual zeitgeist. Um, and also clearly Rovio doesn't have a lot of or any success at least any sort of quantifiable success um, creating anything that isn't Angry Birds so they're the Angry Birds I actually am curious as to what they worked on before I mean there is a list here I don't have time to go into all of it. They you don't have lot. to say it. I'll, I'll probably look it up later. Yeah, but um, everything from a game called Bounce, uh, Bounce Boing Voyage for the Engage 2.0 platform to the Java ME version of Need for Speed Carbon. Um, I can't but, imagine why an Engage game didn't do well. It might have done okay. Like I said, th- this isn't the Engage Engage. This is the Engage phone platform, oh, which is right. which is less ridiculous. Yeah, it's Engage 2.0. Like, um, to simplify things, you know. So it's not automatically attached to a thing where you have to like remove the fucking battery pack to change. No, the- it, it, it was a regular phone um, OS. Um, I think it was like a precursor to Symbian, I believe. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, they did do a Symbian game called Bounce Touch. Um, but it, it's all sorts of games that they did prior to Angry Birds, like U.S. Marine Corps, Scout Sniper, or Java ME in 2006. Anyway. Um, so... Rovio has basically become stagnant, being unable to 
replicate any sort of new success, and their old success is getting uh, kind of long in the tooth. Mm-hmm. So that is why they have put themselves up for sale. Uh, you know, which begs the question: What's Sega going to do with them? Well, what? Yeah. So, what is Sega's rationale here? Uh, and I could answer that. Um, Hopefully, Sega, they don't plan on doing angry hedgehogs. That may actually happen. They have crossed over before. I mean, well, so, se- like, once again, um, Angry Birds. Not the household name it used to be, but it is still a successful mobile game. And that's kind of, that's kind of where the mobile market is today. Um, because keep in mind, um, the giants of mobile gaming bring in so much fucking money. Because How much Asia money? still loves mobile games. But um, how much money, you might ask? not just Asia. Uh, Millions or billions. Literally half of the industry. 50% of all money made in video games happens in mobile. It's why Take-Two bought Zynga last year. It's why Activision Blizzard is trying to be absorbed by Microsoft. You know, Sony's um, fretting about Call of Duty. Microsoft wants King, Candy Crush developer. At one time, Supercell, the developer of Cash of Clans, was the most expensive video game purchase ever. In fact, the the most expensive purchase uh, for a video game maker this year is the $5.6 billion purchase of Scopely by the Savvy uh, Games Group or the Savvy Media Group or um, the the Saudis, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you don't know who Scopely is, they do a lot of licensed uh, mobile games. Like, Sega wants a part of that pie. Um, And yes, Sega does have successful mobile games in Japan. Mm-hmm. But the it Japanese does... uh, mobile gaming environment is uh, significantly different than the uh, American one. Um, or elsewhere. Like Yeah, than the non-Japanese ones, let's yeah. just say. Yeah, maybe other uh, you know, South Asian countries, but um, yeah, Sega... You know, Sega's um, Western mobile endeavors, um, the only success they've seen there are from Hard Light Sonic games. Yep. Um, everything else, um, not so much. So, you know, they're paying $775, uh, sorry, 70, $775 million million um, to get a successful mobile games developer that ma- that pairs well with what Sega does. Mm-hmm. Um, Beat a hedgehog over the fucking head. Actually, and Sonic isn't even that bad of a fucking match for Angry Birds gameplay. Everybody r- turns up into a ball to attack already, so... Yeah. Yeah, um... As far as how deep the crossover well will get, um, we don't know. Like, um, the deal, uh, I think, is expected to close um, in anywhere from July to September. That is not a short period of time. I guess it's three months. It's, I guess, a standard amount of time. Like, you know, it, it's not. Well, it's, and unlike the Activision Microsoft thing, there's not going to be any arguments that this is somehow over centralizing the market. No, no. I'd still prefer studios to mostly not buy each other out, but. 
It's, I mean, I know cap, gonna, capitalists going to capitalism. It's all capitalism. Right. That, that's, that's what I, yeah. You know, it's like, I, I, I will never understand, you know, applying that terminology to, it's all fucking capitalism, people. Like, they're all engaged in capitalism. But th- that is a debate for another day. Because we got to wrap this up. Because um, it is not only the return of Fragments of Silicon, we got the return of MSP happening in about, ooh, 15 minutes. And we do actually have a guest there. So, um, anyway, coming up on the week ahead, if I can get to the proper uh, page. Give me a half a second here. Uh, Let's see, no, 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 no. Here we go. Uh, Coming up on April 28th, we'll be having Robert uh, Backstrom of Aurora Punks. Um, they're a gaming collective, and uh, let's just say that they have their hand on a whole bunch of games. Um, not sure how many we're going to be able to cover because uh, they have requested uh, that this interview be just a half an hour. So, consider it to be kind of a lightning round in terms of an interview. Like, um, anyway. Uh, coming up on the Sunday game reviews, we'll be having reviews of Moves, Him and Her Collection, Crazy Mosquito, and Can of Wormholes. So, don't open it. Like, anyway, um, until next time, which could be as soon as uh, 10 minutes or so from now, um, I shall wish you good gaming.